Trouble sometimes are here, failing these hearts we fear. Freedoms we all hold dear, now is that stake. Humbling your hearts to God, saved from the chasing rod. Seek the way, pilgrim strut, Christians awake. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound. The dead in Christ shall rise. Righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies. Heavenward bound. Troubles will soon be o'er. Happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore. Free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world's goodbye. Homeward we then will fly, glory to share. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. The dead in Christ shall rise. Just me in the skies, skies Going where going no where one dies Heavenward bound My Jesus is Jesus coming is soon Morning or night oh, or oh, noon Many will Just meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. We're going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Grace and peace unto the dear brethren and viewers. This is Brother Michael Francis from Tuesday Assembly Adventist Church. And we do welcome you and tell you thank you for joining us in another live. Right? So we have with us tonight, we have Brother Kwame with us, we have Brother David with us, we have Sister Ashley Leahin and Brother Joel Leahin with us, right? And tonight, the topic that we will focus on is the war against Christ, the unsustainable goals of the left, right? Now, before we go any further, we will ask for you all to bow the head and close the eyes as we approach God in heaven, right? And let us pray. O kind and merciful Father, as we, your servants, come before your throne of grace, we seek in for your tender mercies and asking for you to grant us the forgiveness of sins, which is a transformation of the mind from sin unto righteousness by the non-imputation of the carnal mind and the gift of the righteousness of God in the heart in place of sins. We ask you to give us this transformation and this change because it's only by this change can we teach transgressors your ways and sinners could be converted unto you. Heavenly Father, Heavenly King, we are nothing less than a nothing. And we, O oh Father, have nothing in ourselves it's the glory. All glory belong unto you. And it's unto you we must give it, O oh Father. Father, we beseech you, asking for light 
and revelation as we are about to go into the study, asking you to grant us the truth from your heavenly sanctuary as we focus upon some most solemn points of scripture to open before our minds the crucialness or the danger or the destruction of our war against Christ so far. Help us to see when we touch in it, the lateness of time and help us to dedicate ourselves by giving our heart completely unto thee. And we ask, O oh Father, for provenient grace to reign in the mind of all the hearers, that transformation may take place in them, O oh Father, by seeing these scriptures, seeing these points, and seeing that they need you, the only Savior, for safety, for there is no safety outside of you. So please guide us into this Bible study, O oh Father, in Jesus' name, amen. So, once again, right, the name of the study is the war against Christ, the unsustainable goals of the king of the south or of the left, all right? And why such a study is because meditating upon all the things taking place in the world and understanding that the both enemies, both the king of the north and the king of the south, strive or fight for global kingship is an attack upon the kingship of Jesus Christ. And in this attack upon the kingship of Jesus Christ, humanity is fought, is fought in the middle of this battle between these two satanic power for rulership. And in this strife, much evil is being practiced or much evil is coming out of it. What we have is not only evil in ideologies, but we have also evils taking place where the ideologies are affecting the mind of men, causing the loss of many lives, causing the moral fabric of society to be destroyed, causing humanity to become ungovernable, unruly, and causing in society that the state of the world become fast, what, unlivable. We have evil men in high places being used by evil angels, to create great destruction through the weather and other means. So we know that we're living in, this, in, a, in some crucial times and we know that the final destruction of the earth is upon us. But there is a particular point that the Holy Spirit drawn out to my mind that I would love to present in a study and to bring home the point unto us for us to see that this war against Christ is unsustainable. Anyone that set their mind to war against Christ, their goal is to war against Christ and they put together policies in their war against Christ. It is unsustainable goals. It will never benefit humanity. It will only mount to the destruction of humanity. But the scripture I would like to start with is in John chapter 14, verse 16 to verse 18. John chapter 14, verse 16, verse 18. And I will start there because there is a principle that is put there by Christ that is very important. All right? John chapter 14, from verse 16 to verse 18. And it says here, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So this is Christ. And this is Christ saying, what is his prayer? That he would pray for the father to send another comforter to abide with his servants forever. But who is this other comforter? He continued, even the spirit of truth. So the other comforter is the spirit of truth. But hear what he said about that. Whom the world cannot receive. Why? Because it seeth him not interpretively neither knoweth him. So the world cannot see him. That means see him through the eyes of the understanding, see him interpretively. Why? Because the world what? Do not know him. So who the world does not know is the spirit of truth. And because the world does not know the spirit of truth, we have man yet in their sins. And we have the evil that it have upon the earth being rampant. Because the earth 
earth's education, the earth's concepts and ideologies is what caused the world not to know the Holy Spirit. It's what caused the world that they cannot see him. But he make a statement, he continues, he said, yeah, but ye know him, that is to what? His church, for he dwelleth what? With you and shall be where? In you. So the other comforter that he pray for the servants is that comforter must dwell what? In a servant and be what? With his servants. So the comforter, the Holy Spirit must be in us to be what? With us. If he's not in us, he cannot be what? Mm -hmm. With us. All right, but he continues. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to what? To you. So who is coming to us as the Holy Spirit? Jesus Christ. How, why did Christ say this? Because he said this in context of when he died and he what? He resurrected and he's, he's ascended to what? To heaven. Who is he sending for? Who is coming forth to us as the other comforter? The spirit of truth. And Christ shows to us that when he's coming, when the Holy Spirit is coming, he's coming to abide with us in us. And he's coming to abide with us in us forever. But Christ shows that he's coming to us as the what? The spirit of truth. But he showed the world don't know the spirit of truth. And because the world don't know the spirit of truth, who the world does not know? Jesus Christ. But the important part, that point for us to see is that since Christ is coming forth to us as the spirit of truth, any war upon this earth against Christ is a war against the what? The spirit of truth. Because Christ is coming to us as the what? The spirit of truth. That's how he's coming forth. That's how he, he's being what? Revealed to us as the what? The spirit of truth. And how he's dwelling in us as the spirit of truth. So for the world to lay or to wage war against Christ, they have to wage it against who? The Holy Spirit of truth. But when you go to John chapter 16, look what Jesus says in John chapter 16, verse 13 to verse 14. He says there, how be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into what? All truth. So when the Holy Spirit of truth has come forth, what he's come forth for? To guide us into what? All truth. That's what he come forth for. I'm going to say all truth. They're talking about comprehensive. Not some truth or a part truth, all truth. So the Holy Spirit is to guide us into all truth. About what? All things. So whether it be truth upon our, our body, what our body is, it comes from the what? The Holy Spirit of truth. Whether it be truth upon the type of education or the knowledge that our mind is supposed to possess, who it comes from? The Spirit of truth. Whether it be truth upon, upon sex, who it must come from? The Spirit of truth. It is the Spirit of truth was sent for to guide us into what? All truth. Because it is through the spirit of truth, Christ will teach you what, what? The truth. We have Christ in his high priestly ministration in heaven. And the book of Revelation chapter 5 tell us, when you see Christ in his sanctuary, it seems as a slain lamb. And he is seen in the sanctuary as a slain man, having what? Seven horns and seven eyes. And the Bible says, which are the spirit of God that is sent forth into what? All the world. So Christ is ministering from the heavenly sanctuary to the whole world by the word, Holy Spirit. But what he's ministering, what he's sending the Holy Spirit for, to guide us into all truth. So what we have the influence of Christ on society by? How does Christ influence man? Society bring conviction. By the spirit of truth. It is by the spirit of truth he convict, he, 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 he convict the world of what? Sin, righteousness, and what? Judgment. He does it by the what? The spirit of truth. So we want to read on now. He said here, yeah, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, 
that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify what? Me. For he shall receive of mine and shall do what? Show it unto you. You are seeing that? So that same spirit that comfort to guide us into all truth, comfort to glorify who? Christ in the earth. So the glory of Christ, his authority, his dominion, his kingship is established in the earth by the what? The Holy Spirit. It is he who come to guide us into all truth. It is by him, Christ is what? Glorifying him in the earth and in heaven. So all war are on Christ in ideology, in policy, in any form, is an attack. Is an attack, a war against the what? The spirit of truth that was sent to guide us into what? All truth. And this is an essential point that we all have to see. What we want to see now Christ created all things and watch. What one thing that's fascinating me about the scripture? Colossians chapter 1, 15 to verse 17. One thing that's fascinating me about the scripture is how in this scripture, Paul used many words, different words, basically meaning the word, the same thing to point a particular thing for us to understand that these things was made for Christ. It's so beautiful. These things was made for who? For Christ. It's so beautiful. So you turn into Colossians chapter 1, 15 to verse 17. He says here, who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creation. You see that? It's continued. He says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. But what you fixated focus of the Holy Spirit? He said, whether they be what? Thrones. The word for thrones is the Greek word what? Thronos. All right? And the Greek word thronos literally means potentate or higher power. So all potentate or higher power in the earth was created or made by who? Christ. You say all things was made by him. Every potent and potent it means ruler or what? Monarch. So all rulers and all monarchs were made by what? By him. Are you seeing that? He made them for what purpose? It continues. He said here, yeah. right? All thrones. Then he continued. He said, or dominions, or what? Principalities. You word dominions and principalities is the word archaic. And you word literally, on, it relates to exousia. And it literally means rulers, magistrates, princes, persons of influence, authorities, civil rulers, all that is what the word means. So Colossians is telling us the image of the invisible God, all things were made for him. Are you all seeing that, Virgin? All civil rulers, all magistrates, all princes was made what? By him and was made what? For him. Are you all understanding that? It continue. It says, our powers. Powers is the Greek word exousia. And it, it literally means authorities of what? Celestial or what? Terrestrial authorities. All were made what? By him and all were made what? For him. Are you all seeing that? And if all was made by him and for him in this sinful world, then all must recognize what? His authority as king. And all must be under his what? Influence. Because they all were made by him and they all were made what for him. Amen. amen, amen. So when in Psalms 2, Brother Michael, the yeah. kings of the earth who made for him, when they set themselves against him now, what, what happened in there? 
That's what we're coming to. Amen. That's what we're coming to. Because if all things are made by him and for him, which means all must recognize his what? Authority and all must be subject to influence. Because it was made by him and for him. But before I come to Psalm chapter 2, we'll go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Right? Proverbs chapter 8. Okay? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 14 to verse 17. All right? Continue. It says here. He says, counsel is mine. This is, this is wisdom talking, and we know wisdom is Christ. Isn't that so? So this is Christ speaking to us as wisdom, and here what Christ as wisdom is telling you and I. He said here, counsel is mine and song wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign. You are seeing that? So how was a king meant to reign? By Christ, by wisdom. You see that? He continued. He said, and princes decree justice. How does princes decree justice or fairness in policies? Because it decreed, decrees are law. So how do we get just policies and laws and laws from princes? When what? Wisdom reign or influence. When wisdom reign or influence in society, we will have just decrees. We'll have fear laws. So Christ is telling you, when he rule or he reign, this is what kings, kings do. This is what princes do. We continue and he said, you know, by me, princes rule, just rule, right? And nobles, even all the judges of the what? The earth. Judges of the earth is magistrates. So kings, princes, magistrates, all were set up by what? By wisdom and for what? For wisdom. So in a sinful world, every magistrate, every king, every princess must recognize Christ's sovereignty. And they must, they must allow his influence to reign in society. Because look what he said in verse 17. Why this is so? Why does princes declare just decrees and judges rule? He said this, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall do what? Shall find me. So why must his influence and his rule be recognized in society? So people who seek him could find him. This is why Christ was the rule in society. But how, does, how did Christ made all these principalities and powers and these, um, these things? How does the king reign by him? He make a statement. He said something in Psalms chapter 104. Psalms chapter 104, verse 30. You hear what he said in Psalms chapter 104, verse 30? Thou sendest for thy spirit and what? They are created, and what? And thou renewest the face of the earth. Beautiful, eh? So how is this thing set up? He says he sent forth the spirit, and they are what? Created. You hear what he's telling you and I? So every restraint upon a king mind, injustice and fairness, it is the Holy Spirit. Every policy that recognize Christ's rule in society is the influence of Christ on society through the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean to fight against Christ and war against his rule? It's to remove or seek to remove the restraining power of the Holy Spirit from on the mind of men. It's seeking to cast off the restraint of the Holy Spirit through the social cord that binds man to Christ. And that's where Psalms chapter two, verse one to verse three comes in. 
That's why I tell you it's a vain thing these people is imagining. Because think, think about it, Virgin. Since they say by him, all things are consist or held together. For you, for him to make it and for him to hold it together, for you to cast off his restraint, that's an unsustainable goal. That's an unsustainable goal. For you to seek to remove the restraining power of the Holy Spirit from the mind of men. For you to seek to destroy the work of the Holy Spirit in society. That's an unsustainable goal. So what do we get? Christ's sustainable goal is, 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 is this. Society being free for the work of the Holy Spirit. That's Christ's sustainable goal. Watch and you will see just now from the Bible. Eh? The Bible itself is going to teach us. Psalm chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 3. And we need to get this principle in our minds. When, when you sit down and you're meditating on this again, think about showing off the restraint of the Holy Spirit. Think about that. So we think, so we go continue, all right? Why do the hidden conspire? And the people imagine it what? A vain thing. You hear that? I often, when I read this, I like to say a vacuous thing. I think empty of the love of God. <laughs> so the hidden conspire. But what do people imagine? Can I say this is a vain thing that they're imagining. Why? Because by him, all things are what? Consist. So it's a vain thing imagining. Is a vain thing that you are conspiring. So you're continuing. Why do the hidden conspire and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth station themselves. And the rulers set councils or set decrees of, right? Together. Against Yahweh and against what is anointed. Are you all seeing that? So the decrees is set together against who? Yahweh and against what? His anointed. You are seeing that? But when they set the decrees together against Yahweh and against his anointed, how is Yahweh and his anointed working in the earth through the Holy Spirit? For you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of the anointed dwelling in you. If any man have not, if so be the spirit of God, Yahweh dwelling in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, the anointed is none of his. So to set the decrees against Yahweh and against his anointed, it's to attack, it's to set it against who? The work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And that attack there, Brother Amen. Michael, against Yahweh and against his anointed, that is their sustainable development goals. That is it. The sustainable development goals is against Christ, against God and against Christ. And look, in Colossians that you, um, you used earlier, mm -hmm. it said, he is before all things and by mm -hmm. him all things consist. That is, that is sustainability there. Exactly. So Christ is the one who sustains all things. Mm -hmm. So the moment you work against Christ who sustain mm -hmm. all things, then your goals that you call sustainable is not sustainable. It's exactly. unsustainable development goals. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. Exactly. So that's how we have to view what the UN is doing. It is unsustainable goal. The work that they are doing is seeking to cause all things to fall apart to be destroyed. But then we have to follow because what? If the kings of the earth set themselves to do this and the rulers take counsel, it means they're seeking to remove the influence of Christ and the recognition of his kingship from on the mind of what? Principalities, powers, dominions. You see that? So when they're seeking to do that, you know what they're seeking to put or establish? Spiritual wickedness in high places. They're seeking to establish spiritual wickedness in high places. Wait, what? <laughs> Since mm -hmm. in Colossians it show that Christ is in Christ have his influence upon principalities and powers and dominions, mm -hmm. as kings and magistrates and politicians mm -hmm. and a whole. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. when these you see that that is why the you the the united nations sustainable development goals the global mm -hmm. is seeking to get all countries to follow it mm -hmm. so literally when we see our politicians following these sustainable development goals they mm -hmm. are actually in in choosing to follow that is literally like a kind of re it's a rejection of the influence exactly. of christ upon their minds exactly so that is why you know you lead us i wouldn't say suddenly but they, they become globalists they become mm -hmm. communists when you think that you live in okay we have a republican constitution we live in a republic we live in a mm -hmm. free country mm -hmm. just like that your leader become a communist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is designed to do just that, to make mm -hmm. the leader reject the influence of Christ, reject the Holy Spirit speaking to his conscience. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. That is what the war upon Christ is about. Because the moment you lead war against Christ, what you're leading war against? The Holy Spirit on the conscience. To lead war against Christ is to create policies that will attack Spirit-led reasoning. So what is seeking to do? Destroy that. That's what a Republican constitution wants to teach you and I. When crisis influence is recognized in society, what reigns? Republicanism. You get in that? So, so an attack I'm against reading... Republicanism is an attack against spirit-led reasoning. Exactly. It's an attack against spiritual reasoning. Spirit-led reasoning. So you see in it, Virgin? Amen. So we see, when they seek to break that, it said in verse 3, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. You see that? So the war that we are seeing right now, this war for, of spiritualism that you are seeing right now, the war of the work of evil angels, through the leaders of society is a war against what? The working of the Holy Spirit. So spiritualism war is a war against the Holy Spirit. So then setting up a, 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 um, a new world order, mm -hmm. a one world control, Mm -hmm. that that is like literally seeking to just banish the influence of the holy spirit upon everybody and it that is it because the holy spirit who comes to us as as the, as the character of christ so when you and i see they are attacking certain ideologies certain ideologies is being formed certain policies and concepts are being formed seeking to remove christ's influence in society these things are formed to destroy what? The conviction of the Holy Spirit upon the mind of men, to remove or to destroy conscience. That's the reality. Let's we have Brother Molina make a comment, right? He said, yeah. the just lives by feet. Mm -hmm. Thus, any divine goals mm -hmm. are sustained by feet. Right? We, we and God's that. Republican goals Amen. for people are caused and sustained by faith. You see that? Amen. So God's sustainable development goals in a sinful world is republicanism. You see exactly. that? Exactly. But watch. The part we say it is caused and sustained by faith. Because, yeah. God's Republican oh. goals for people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when you say it is caused and sustained by faith, the spirit is the spirit of faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the spirit of faith, so the spirit led reasoning is what caused it. Amen, brethren. Spirit led reasoning. So thank you, Bena Medina. Right. So we want to show you all that the war taking place upon Christ right now is a war that is causing the Holy Spirit to be withdrawn from the earth. Is a war that is causing the Holy Spirit to be what? Withdrawn from the earth. Because the war with the ideologies coming from the king of the north and the king of the south is to harden man's heart in certain knowledge positions that will cause the Holy Spirit to kind of speak to them. 
and when the and when that is happening and the, the Holy Spirit is being what we're drawn from the earth, you know what that means? That means we are in danger. There is there is what protection is being removed from the earth. Protection is being removed from the earth. Watch me. I'm trying to, I don't think I'm doing justice, but what God showed my mind when I was going through the study, I really find I'm doing justice, is what is happening when you war against Christ. Don't think that transsexual education is just so. Transsexual education is to do what? Destroy the mind and bring the mind focused upon the passions of the flesh and the pleasures of the flesh. Cause the mind to be focused upon it in such a way to shut out the Holy Spirit that the focal consciousness of men cannot be reached by the Holy Spirit. This issue of climate change, global warming, is to teach you how to be a lion at thief. It's to teach you how to be a liar and a thief and to sensitize your consciousness so much to cause you to become dull to the conviction of the Holy Spirit, but prone to murder. Dull to the conviction of the Holy Spirit, but prone to murder. That is actually how young people in colleges and institutions actually believe that the genocide of the earth will save the earth. People actually believe that since man is causing carbon emission, tax man for the carbon, something natural that he has no power over. Hmm. Amen. We have a next comment. Where? Abraham Dina says here, does global communism is in fact a war against God's sustainability in the Amen. earth? Amen. A sin freeness sustainability. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Because it's spirit led reason that has been assaulted. It literally bring in to settle man into what? Into the sin. Harden man's mind into knowledge position. To make sin a normal thing. Sin become normal. Sin become ordinary. Your conscience become desensitized to protest. That's what literally happening. Your conscience become desensitized to protest. So the spirit of protestantism is on that salt. I, I, I seek to bring it out the way how God show my conscience is being troubled by Jim. We are in trouble. So we want to look at some quotations where Sister Mike shows that the evil that is happening today, that evil that is spreading is causing the Holy Spirit to be withdrawn from the earth. We want to look upon that, right? So Ashley, first two quotations. Right? We want to... When I get in the quotation, you know, I'm just thinking about Brother Mina's mm -hmm. last comment there. Mm -hmm. Wait, I, let me just read it over. Right? He said, Thus, global communism is in fact a war against God's sustainability in the earth, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. sin freeness sustainability. Diane. So, what God, what sustains the earth is sin freeness. Exactly. And the setting up of republicanism was orchestrated by God. For the for people's conscience to be free to be spoken to by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and the aim of the Holy Spirit speaking to the conscience, the conscience is to is for Justify. the person to get conversion, right? Yes, yes. For the person yes. to have a, a a justified, converted, spirit-led reasoning. Exactly. And that is sin freeness. That is what sustains it, right? Mm -hmm. So. God literally set up republicanism and it is the principles of republicanism that mm. sustains the earth. So mm. for communism to thrive, they have to, they have to attack the principles of republicanism. And since it's the principles of republicanism, which really leads people to conversion, 
that sustains the earth to get rid of that now to set up communism is literally um, is that attacking against sustainability exactly right sustainability mm -hmm. right so the the goal that really cannot sustain the earth hmm. the earth cannot be sustained with principles that is anti-republicanism and anti sin freeness and we mm. can see that in the the transsexual canon knowledge education exactly this one yes that one right because we want to quote two from this and two of the quotation that sister anisia used and she was showing us is your spiritualism right spiritualism more so this one is taken from testimony for the churches I think it's chapter 51 and 52, paragraph one, right? Or some other book, chapter 52, paragraph one. But we want to quote now testimonies for the church, all right? And it reads, the restraining spirit of God is even now being one with John. The restraining power of God is even now being withdrawn from the world. She continued. Hurricanes, storms, tempest, fire, and flood, disasters by sea and land, follow each other in quick what? Succession. So when we are seeing all these hurricanes and storms, when we are seeing all these tempests and fire and flood and all these, all these what? Disasters, which are some is wrought by evil angels through what? Evil men. And some is wrought by evil angels, which is spiritualism, war upon what? Humanity. When we see these things taking place, it's because of the what? The Holy Spirit, the restraining spirit of God is being what? Withdrawn from the earth. As men heart are becoming more harder and harder in their sins, as ideologies spread, that will make man become what? Reprobate. The restraining power of the spirit of God is being withdrawn. A continuing, right? Science seeks to explain all these global warming, climate change. Science seeks to explain all these. The signs thickening around us, telling of the near approach of the Son of God, are attributed to any other than the true cause. Men cannot discern the sentinel angels restraining the four winds that they shall not blow until the servant of God are sealed. Are you seeing that? Men cannot discern the word, the sentinel angels working. The four angels that are sent for to hold back the winds of strife. Men cannot discern it. Why? Why they cannot discern it? Why they cannot discern the sentinel angels working? Why they cannot discern the signs that testify about the near approaching of the Son of God? Because men's conscience are being what? Fastly destroyed, fastly destroyed by satanic ideologies and philosophies in the king of the north and the king of the south. It continues, right? Men cannot deserve. Also, also, Brother Michael, okay. um, the part that says science seek, mm -hmm. seeks to explain all of these. The mm -hmm. fact that they attribute these things to climate change and so on, that, that rubs the mind of the conviction of the lateness of time. You just, you just exactly. blame science for everything, blame climate change for everything. Exactly. So no discernment of nothing, right? It says, men cannot discern the sentinel angels restraining the four winds that they shall not blow until the servants of God are sealed. But when God shall bid his angels loose the winds, there shall be such a scene of strife as no pen can what? Can picture. You see that? There shall be such a wind of strife that no pen can do what? Picture. So we're going to the next one quickly, right? Because we have much to cover. It says, 
The days in which we live are solemn and important. The days in which we live are solemn and important. The spirit of God is gradually, but surely being withdrawn from the earth. Why? Because men set their mind to fight against Yahweh and his anointed. Men set their mind in high places to do so. And by their, and by their policies and laws and decrees, civil society is on a moral decay. Conscience are not respected. Concepts and knowledge is being stolen in the mind of people that make them more lovers of pleasure than God. That shut out the influence of the Holy Spirit from the mind. That society is being filled with evil. Society is filled with all sorts of wickedness and sin that is causing God what? Spirit. It's restraining his restraining spirit to be what? Gradually but surely withdrawn. It continues. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. Do you know climate change teach you to despise God's grace? Can you work out how climate change is against God's grace? What about transsexual education? What transsexual, Asia, transsexual education causes you to do? Despise God's grace. How? How is that making you despise God's grace? Because since God's grace is outlined in the plan of salvation, we have providential grace, provenient grace, renewing grace, empathic grace, and what? Judicial grace. When you think about transsexualism, since transsexualism is a philosophy that teach man to focus on desire and passions and to establish the fleshly mind in man against the work of the Holy Spirit, then the grace of God that calls for change, that calls for transformation, that calls for you to repent and forsake those things will be despised. The person will despise the grace of God. That when you come teaching to them, they, serve, they need to change. That, that sexual madness will continually come up in, in the mind as a block. And when that happens, you will become the object of the hate. You will become the object of the assault. The grace of God has provided, as provenient grace, as renewing grace, they will hate it. And they despise it. You could tell in society, some people, they don't even want to hear the gospel. Why? Because of the way they are educated through the influence of the king of the north on society or the king of the south on society. It continues. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, the alarms of war are portentous. They, they forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world. And the final movement movements will be what? Rapid ones. Are you seeing that, Virgin? The final movements will be what? Rapid ones. Because the earth cannot be what? Sustained any longer. The earth cannot be sustained any longer. When they set their mind to fight against Christ and against his spirit in their policies and teach man to despise God's grace. The earth cannot last much longer. That's why when we see the great changes taking place in our world, society, in our world, we must have in our mind the final movements are what? 
the rapid ones. That's what we must have in our minds. But our part in the quotation I would like to focus on. She said the agencies of evils are combining their forces and consolidating. Consolidating means joining what? Together into one whole or what? A unit to make firm or to what? Secure or to strengthen or to, to form into what? A compact mass. That's what consolidating needs to do. So they're combining and they're joining together into one whole. What agencies of evil is that? The agencies of evil among evil angels and the agencies of evil amongst wicked men. So this is talking to you and I about institutionalized corruption. This is speaking to you and I about institutions being set up and combining together into a whole to carry out great evil upon the face of the earth. This is showing you and I, Satan is gathering together his forces to do his great evil and to cause great changes in the earth. So we want to go to the quotation from the great controversy. Quotation from the great controversy. Society. Page five, page five, eighty-nine, and then the next one after. From the great controversy. Yes. All right. You want to see this? So, as the restraining power of the of the Holy Spirit has been what withdrawn from society, because man is given the mind over to great evil. Satan is able now to work great destruction in society. Spiritualism war is able, is able to be waged now upon the face of the earth in a way it was never waged before. We are able to see satanic, Satan working through the elements, Satan working through, through nature, Satan working through um, ungodly men in such a way. Why? Because man's heart has been set to evil and the restraining spirit of God has been what? Withdrawn. That's why this quotation is given to us by God. Satan works through the elements also. Sister Ashe, and I see the whole quotation. All right, I've seen it. Satan works through the elements also to garner his harvest of unprepared souls. Are you all seeing that, Virgin? Are you all seeing when man is sinning and man is, man is being hardened? in fighting against Yahweh and his anointed, who is at work now to the elements? And why he's working now the way he's working? He's working so to gather unprepared souls. He has studied the secrets of the laboratories of, laboratories of nature, and he uses all his power to control the element as far as God allows. Why does God allow it? Because men rejecting him. Men rejecting and despising his grace. Men's heart is set against his law. They, they become despisers of good things. They become haters of God and lovers of pleasures. So he continued, when he, was when he was suffered to afflict Job, how quickly flocks and herds, servants, houses, children were swept away, one trouble succeeding another as in a moment. It is God that shields his creatures and hedges them in from the power of the destroyer. How are we to get protection? How are we to be secured and shield from the destructive power of evil angels? Only God can do that. But if the earth is set to reject him, how can he shield them? How can he protect them? How can he hedge them in from the power of the destroyer? He can't. But the Christian world have shown contempt for the law of 
Jehovah or Yahweh. And the Lord will do just what he has declared that he would. He will withdraw his blessing from the earth. He will do what? Withdraw his blessing from the earth. That's the, that's the restraining spirit of God. Are you all understanding that? That's the restraining spirit of God. And remove his protecting care from those who are rebelling against his law. And teaching and forcing others to do the same. We will see a video just now of people who are doing this. Satan has control of all whom God does not especially guard. He will favor and prosper some, which is the international bankers, the rich men who he will use to carry out great evil upon the earth in order to further his own designs. In order to further his what? Own designs. And he will bring trouble upon others and lead men to believe that it is God who is afflicting them. Are you seeing that, Pedro? He will lead men to believe what? It is God who is afflicting them. Thus to create hate in the mind of humanity for God. Are you seeing that, Virgin? So somebody will ask, so what is, the, is this issue? Because you're going to see our video just now on um, cloud seeding and all these things. Why Satan is prospering some to carry out all those evil crowd seeding and different things for the element, um, for the um, but to bring rain and snow and all these things, strange weathers and lightning. Why he's doing that? So he can further his own design. So with the cloud seeding taking place, he could work through all these things to create great destruction. He could work through all these things to bring about great hurricanes and storms to kill people, to gather on prepared souls. That's why he's doing all of these things. Do you think cloud seeding happening just so? With his evil men seeking to take possession of the, of the element or the weather? It is not happening just so. It is Satan seeking to further his design. Are you understanding, Virgin? But the only how Yes, can I go ahead? You finish your sentence. Uh, but the only how this is happening, the quotation shows us why. God was what? Withdrawing his blessing from the earth. He's removing his protection, which is the what? The Holy Spirit working in the earth. You all seen that, Belgium? Even. Go ahead. But again, he said, this is why we cannot think we have safety in non abidance. Amen. Yes. There's a comment from Brother Medina earlier on. He said, it is Satan, Satan, seeking to hide his climate manipulation evils that blames man's carbon emissions in such a way to bring policies of war upon humanity, which is global communism. Wow. So he he favoring he prospering of you to do the 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 climate change manipulation. And that now is so that they could bring about the policies of war upon humanity. So all that mm -hmm. is communism. And whilst whilst they are doing that to bring about their communism, Satan is is um taking unprepared souls one mm -hmm. and two, leading those who remain alive to blame God. Mm -hmm. To blame God for what is happening. You see, no? Mm -hmm. Amen. So you see what's going on? This is why we should not play or toy with our spirituality. We should not toy with our spirituality. We should not have our minds being susceptibly undermined by Satan's concepts and ideology that cause us to reason in a very crooked or evil way against the Holy Spirit. We shouldn't wonder in a time like this. When God is rejoining his protection and your only safety is in God. We shouldn't want this. I want to show you about this God. It's actually pretty first video by God's grace. Thank you. Let's see this video about cloud, um, cloud seeding, which is tying to climate change, their climate change agenda, where they will seek to use these things to bring in their community policies 
to bring about great evil upon the face of the earth. All right? And you can pause there. Look, we have a man want to block out or shut out the one. It's the sun. He wants to find a way to block out for the sun from humanity. But look, this chart showing us that, it, that, that just 20 minutes of the sunshine per day, it, trigger, it triggers your body to release over 200 anti, anti -micro, microbials that fights against fungi and other things, all right? And that's in the whole chart to fashion. But look, we have a man working to shut out the sun or block out the sun. Are you all seeing that? It says to fight, to fight fungi, parasites, and viruses. Yes, thank you. So actually, 20 minutes of the sunlight is healthy or good for the human body. It is pro-health. But look how man want to block all the sun. All is in the climate agenda. All is, all, all is in the so-called climate change. But all is to work what? Destruction in the earth. Because Satan is plotting behind his men to gather on prepared souls. So you want to watch the body video now? Read the chart, everybody. Eh, they can't benefit from sunlight, right? In 1972, The Limits to Growth was published by the Club of Rome. The book suggested that swift human depopulation would save the planet. In 2018, The Limits to Growth co-author Dennis Meadows explained how we need to murder billions of people. The planet can support something like a billion people maybe two billion, depending on how much liberty and how much material consumption you want to have. If you want more liberty and more consumption, you have to have fewer people. And conversely, you can have more people. I mean, we could even have eight or nine billion, probably, if we have a very strong dictatorship, which is smart. It's, unfortunately, you never have smart dictatorships. They're always stupid. So, But if you had a smart dictatorship, and a low standard of living, you can have it. But, but we want to have freedom and we want to have a high sentence, so we're going to have a billion people. And we're now at seven, so we have to get back down. I hope that this can be slow, relatively slow, and that it can be done in a way which is relatively equal. Overpopulation is a lie with old school system. How are you going to, the uh, seven billion, but well, when he was speaking, how are you going to get that down to a billion? Um, get it done slow but equal. How, how are you going to kill six billion people and it will be equal? Unsustainable goals. Is that making sense? Sustainable farming and the end of big government, there is enough room on this planet for several billion. And while the Earth's climate does change, most of what we are seeing is contrived. The fires breaking out all across the world are being blamed on climate change, even though hundreds of arsonists have been caught starting them. Most recently, 79 people were arrested for starting fires in Greece. Direct energy weapons, or DEWS, are able to start fires from above and can utilize microwave technology to burn homes from within. In 2013, the mainstream media reported that we were able to make rain and lightning. I mean, lasers, really, to change the weather? By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. This week in Michigan, residents reported a strange strobe-like lightning. The event was captured on weather radar, which showed a very unnatural looking spiral. That's some conspiracy theory shit right there. Making it rain has been possible for decades, 
And we have come a long way since then with the high frequency active auroral research program known as HARP. We can now create hurricanes and we can control their direction with next generation weather radar transmitters known as NEXRAD. By building up an electromagnetic charge and dispersing it underground as direct current VLF waves or very low frequency waves, the NEXRAD radar transmitters are able to trigger earthquakes. Earthquakes and explosives can trigger tsunamis. These are the technologies that we know of, and that only leaves volcanoes and tornadoes. Funded by Peter Thiel, AVE Tech Energy Corporation began work in 2012 on a device to produce a 130-foot-tall tornado. And a former U.S. intelligence officer recently told State of the Nation that the U.S. has already triggered a volcano. Climate change is not only a hoax, it's a depopulation program, and our entire government is going along with it. Reporting for InfoWars, this is Greg Reese. Wow! It is like a warm in the sky, or I don't know how you call it, what is this? Wow! Frequency. What we used to do is beam radio waves. Amen, amen, amen. So, brethren, we watched that video just now, there, right? So, we see Satan could work through the elements of nature, but we also see he prospers some to further his work, his design. And we see the type of weapons that these people have in interfering with what the nature, creating storms, creating rain, creating lightning, all these things that they are able to do. But why are they able to do that? Because God is allowing it to happen for us to see the gravity of the evil or the gravity of the destructiveness of sin or the gravity of the influence of Satan ruling over the mind of ungodly men. God, these things are allowed because God is what? Withdrawing his blessing. He's withdrawing his, his protection from those who are breaking the law, those who despise his grace. So these things are allowed to happen to us, we, the church, we as people could see. And it's supposed to do something to our minds. It's supposed to do something to our minds as we see the work of evil angels through ungodly men, through the elements. We must look and see and learn. So go ahead, sister. ...into the ground, and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We might get a sound back like, and we'd say, that's natural gas. We might get a sound back like, and we say, that's crude oil. We were able to identify each frequency. We accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with a billion watts, the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that could even cause an earthquake. <laughs> se správně kouká, uvidí, co krásy tahle země má.
because a climate scientist whistleblower says prestigious scientific journals only publish papers that fit the narrative. Anything besides doom and gloom, man-made global warming is left unpublished. This is because these studies are often bought and paid for by government grants and charitable foundations, both with political and financial interests in the global warming industry. And it is an industry. But do we really need solar panels, windmills, and electric cars if we can control the weather with laser beams? Instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these Ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. So instead of controlling the narrative, we can just control the weather. Theoretical physicist Dr. Michio Kaku joins me now. So doctor, has the U.S. government been experimenting with weather control? Believe it or not, the answer is yes. People don't realize that, well, as Mark Twain said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, the government takes exception to that. During the Vietnam War, there was something called Operation Popeye, a top secret program to seed the clouds over Vietnam during the monsoon season to wash the Viet Cong out. Ooh. And they actually tried that. They with dropped, laser beams? Well, no, with silver iodide crystals oh. to condense the water vapor to cause nuclei that would then cause raindrops, and that would then accelerate the monsoon season. Okay. So are they doing this today, the U.S. government? Well, it turns out that eight states in the United States uh, practice some form of weather modification. For example, seeding the clouds with silver iodide. And the Chinese, famously at the Olympics, in the year 2008, seeded the clouds in order to have it rain outside of the Olympics. So, <laughs> Did it work? Uh, apparently, yeah. The, the, <laughs> and so is it just China and the United States trying to control the weather? No, uh, many, many countries have, have some kind of weather modification program because the economy, trade, uh, war, everything is dependent upon the weather, if you think about it, right? So can we make things less hot because it was a hot summer? Well, believe it or not, in Dubai, they actually have a laser system based on drones that go into the clouds and fire a laser beam, which, quote, electrifies the air, and these ions then form nuclei for raindrops. Oh. And it accelerates rain in the Middle East. They get four inches <laughs> of rain per year in Dubai. All four right. inches. Super, Michael. Why? So they could so, so they could see the cloud and make rainfall for whatever purposes, special purposes. But when it have the wildfires in, in, in Canada and in Maui and all these places and they claim that those fires just wildfires, right? Why they can't see the cloud and all the fires? <laughs> Point why did us be sending out helicopters to make it seem like if they're doing something to get rid of the fires when they're ready they could see the cloud yes and, and the point is actually, that's the point so it shows the but uh, the shows the way he's painting it there to try to make it look nice is nothing nice it is about the destruction of humanity it is about culling down the population it is about creating havoc when these instruments are in the hand of evil men under the influence of evil angels, there's nothing good. Look, all those videos, you and I sit down there and we're watching as this video play out. Nothing about it is, is sustainable. Nothing about it is preserv preservative because nothing about it is salvific because salvation is preservation. And since these people and their mind are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, sorry, are under the influence of demons, and these people mind reject God, the only thing that could come out, out of the use of these type of, of, of weapons is great evil. Because it has no Holy Spirit upon this consciousness of these men. These men reject 
the Holy Spirit. So you think they are looking to out, out, out rainforest? No, part of their sustainable the development goal is the rainforest burning down to create policies for their climate change, to bring in their global communism. All these things about the rain falling and flooding out places and destroying places where people are dying is to bring the people more susceptible to the control of the government and the institutions at hand. So none of these things here is about anything about salvation, anything about any good thing. All these things and them that we're looking at here is unsustainable goals of the left. This is what we're literally looking at. Just so I can just shoot a laser in the sky and not have to buy a Tesla? Well, in the United States now, we're also t experimenting with terawatt lasers. These Ooh. are trillion watt lasers. They're pulsed. They, they produce more energy in a split second than all the nuclear power plants on the planet Earth. However, it's only for a brief second of time. But in that <laughs> brief second of time, you ionize and electrify the weather so that you get raindrops. All right. After COVID, this sounds a little risky, but I'm sure Joe Biden has it perfectly under control. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. The Department of Defense spends about $1 billion annually developing directed energy weapons, such as high energy lasers and high powered microwaves. These you got something, huh? Because these people are so evil. But that's something. With all these rain, I think we'll hunger should end because it's supposed to have very fertile land. It's supposed to have plenty of rain for things to grow and these things. But these people, through the influence of evil angels, is sweeping away all the what? The ripe harvest, destroying all the ripe harvest, creating famine, made famines. All these wickedness they are doing as part of their what? Sustainable goal agenda. With all this rain, it's supposed to have a set up produce all over the earth just springing up and blooming. No, you don't have that. But what you have? Destruction taking place. So these things are unsustainable. And that's what people have to see. They are unsustainable because these things come from men who set their mind to fight against Yahweh and his anointed, to break their cords and their bands asunder. So you will never get anything sustainable from them. So, so you can take down this now, sister Ashley, right? Take down this now, right? I want to, I want to um, look at our script here, right? I want to look at our beautiful script. Here. Because right, I was watching that taking place here, right? And I was thinking about the evil that was going on. A wonderful script here that God sent my mind to in Isaiah, right? Isaiah chapter 55, okay? Isaiah chapter 55. And then we'll go to the next quotation from, 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 from Sister White about the work of evil angels. All right? <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 55. Verse 10 and verse 11, right? Verse 10 and verse 11, okay? As I was thinking about it and I was doing two things, I was reading it and Isaiah 55 verse 10 and verse 11 says, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and return not a thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower. You see that? Seed to the sower and bread to the eater, he said. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me, boy, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. Okay? But look what God did. He showed how the rain come down and the snow, but what it did, it caused the earth to bud. It bring forth what? Seed to the sower and bread to the man. That's what he could eat. 
But when we look upon the rain that takes place in, um, I forget the country, where the um, dams break and flow through and wash out the place. In the country there? In Libya. Yes, in Libya. All harvest, when you see a picture of the place before and after, the place become a waste place. The place become un, un what? uninhabitable. Look at how much people lose their lives from these unnatural weathers through evil men under the inspiration of evil angels. Look at the great havoc that was wrought. It is a clear sign to show these things are unsustainable. And the more these men use this climate change, um, the more these men use these, um, these weapons to interfere with the elements and the weather, is the more destruction they are rotting upon the face of the earth. Take, for instance, Monsanto seed. You go on to take a seed, genetically modify the seed, and the seed, the plant itself, become a destruction to the original plants and them. So you're destroying the original plants and them. You're mashing up the original plants and them. What do you think happening? All the things are unsustainable goals. This is actually. Oh, right. All the things that we call unsustainable goals. So you want to bring up another quotation from about Satan? So you see, when 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 God send the rain, that is to sustain the earth. Yeah. yeah. But when they send it, is to destroy the earth. Hmm. It's to destroy the earth. And that's why Christ said, destroy them that destroy the earth. You understand? So it's really unsustainable. It's unsustainable. It it's literally unsustainable. Your issue to help man to become a better being is injecting it into his hand, vaccines to change the man biology, to interfere the man or genetics. What do you think you're going to get out of that? The man will die. Unsustainable goes nowhere. But the last one, last one comes to stand inside the bottom. No, not that one, the last one. Yes, that one. Right. And this one, we like to put, right? This one says, while, while appearing to the children of men as a great one physician who can heal all their uh, uh, maladies, 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 he will bring disease and disaster until popular cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Are you seeing that? Until what? Popular cities are, are what? Reduced to ruin and desolation. Even now, he is at work in accidents and calamities by sea and by land. Wait, then we read a quotation that say when the Holy Spirit is withdrawing from the earth, we will have, we will have, accidents, we have calamities by sea and by land. Isn't that? But look who is working in, look, look, look who is doing it. Look who is doing it. In accidents and calamities by sea and by land, in great conflag conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes, and what? Terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves, earthquakes, in every place and in a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the what? Ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly thing. You know that talking about the viruses, right? Or what? Diseases. And thousand perish by the pestilence. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and more disastrous. Destruction will be upon both man and beast. The earth moaneth and fadeth away. The haughty people do what? Languages. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. 
because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the what? Everlasting covenant. Are you all seeing that? Are you all seeing that, Virgin? So what caused these calamities to come? Because men have done what? Transgressed the laws. Change you what? The ordinance broke on the everlasting covenant, which is the seven day Sabbath. So we see the assault upon the law of God and its Sabbath. Even that and all will cause destruction to come upon the face of you. So in one quotation, we are told when men are transgressing the law of Jehovah, and in one of the quotations, we are told they despise the what? The grace. Are you all seeing that, Virgin? So grace and law is what these people are forsaking. These people are forsaking grace and law. These people are attacking the grace of God that establishes the law. And when we see this happening upon the face of the earth, and we see all these tornadoes and hills and these things that Satan work, these things that are happening is to show the restraining spirit of God has been what? With John, but it's also to establish the final events that are rapid ones is upon us. The final event that are rapid one is upon us. But why do the, why are these things come about? They come about because man has man has set their heart to fight against what Yahweh and against what it is anointed by rejecting the what the Holy Spirit. When I was going through this study, the thought flashed on my mind. I can now understand why Paul said, grieve not the Holy Spirit. I could now understand why Christ said, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit will not be what? Forgiven you. I can appreciate those statements. Because the war against Christ in ideology is to destroy, is to destroy the earth. Because the truths of Christ's comfort is for salvation, which is for the preservation of the youth. You all see that? So the moment you set yourself to fight against Christ, in, 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 um, fight against the truth by ideologies in varied forms, by philosophies in varied forms, is the global destruction of the earth. So the next quotation that we want to look at is the quotation of the I'm sorry, not the quotation. The next video that we want to look at is the video of the false prophet of the WEF. We want to see some videos of what they say in regards to what they want to accomplish. So yes, they, they are telling the world, we have what sustainable goals to benefit humanity. The real backdrop of it is to what? destroy humanity. Listen to the false prophet. Listen to this this conspirational prophet speak and see what is the issue of these sustainable goals. Thank you. leaving the rest to drown the rest of the people and then the rest of the people because the army has developed a detailed transition plan to support moving these weapons into the next stages of development we recommended that the navy and the air force develop similar plans and you have a small elite that, um, that pushes things in its own interests, even if it doesn't benefit the vast majority of the population. This has happened so many times previously in history, and it's probably going to happen again. What did the man say? Um, the man say? The... There is a small elite that pushes things in their interest, even though it don't benefit what? Humanity. Are you all seeing that? 
So the sustainable goals is not for the benefit of humanity. The US sustainable goals is not for the benefit of humanity. It is for the interest of the elite to accomplish their aim. But those elite are under the control of who? Evil angels. So hear what the man says. Let's actually play it over again, please. Hear what the man say. Or hear what the false prophet say. You have a small elite that um, that pushes things in its own interests, even if it doesn't benefit the vast majority of the population. This has happened so many times previously in history, and it's probably going to happen again. Um, the one of the biggest dangers to the planet today is this technological utopia because probably for the elite it will work if bad comes to worse then when the flood comes the scientists will build a noah's ark for the elite leaving the rest to drown the rest of the people and then the rest of the of the ecosystem but they are likely to be able to construct the technological noah's ark which is probably what much of the elite is, is counting on But you know, forget about our first philosophy, our Noah. Who the flood coming by? Who are they going to bring? That is, that is coming to them. They are the ones working to create the, the but the different strange what? Whether it's for the destruction of the earth. But they are working to do that. And they are working to establish that for what purpose? So they can further their agenda. And you hear the false prophet talking, Virgin? You hear what is behind climate change? For the elite to establish what? Their agenda. Are you all seeing that, Virgin? So go ahead, my dear. There are countless other clips we've played of Harari that I would remind you of. Just a few months ago, he said he doesn't believe in God, but that we're going to become gods, similar to what Ray Kurzweil and Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates and others have said, this is their transhumanist cult. This is their get out of jail free card, live forever system. This is their, this is their ethos. This is their, this is their religion. And I'm about to play in the next segment, a clip of Yuval Noah Harari, the high priest of the World Economic Forum, that's what they call him, laying out their ultimate in-game secret. They are engineering the artificial collapse of human civilization. And the quote, elites, as he calls himself and the other globalists, are gonna extract the technological know-how and resources of human earth while they cut it off from us to build undersea, underground, and space-based redoubts that will protect them from the organized collapse of civilization. And that's what the COVID release was, was a beta test of far more deadly bioweapons they're planning to release. Remember, Ian Fleming was number two in the OSS and very high level in MI6 after World War II. And he wrote the James Bond books. And one of them was Moon Raker before we even go into space. And in it, he described a group of mad scientists that want depopulation, building a space station they can go to. While on Earth, a deadly bioweapon is released that will kill all life on Earth. They can then return with all the best genetic specimens, and the Earth will be basically like a national park for them. We've now seen statements like this out of Jeff Bezos. And we've now seen statements like this out of basically all of the globalists except Elon Musk, who says he wants a pro-human future. And he's actually more and more moving towards our direction of standing against it. I don't know if he's hedging his bets, but regardless, he's saying and doing the right things. But all of them, from Bill Gates to Klaus Schwab to Tim Cook, are espousing this. This is their transhumanist religion so when we come back from break we are going to play the latest clip of yuval noah harari spilling his guts to the world and admitting the plan 
And it's not just what Harari is saying. All the major globalist publications and television programs, both fiction and nonfiction, promote a world without humans and how great it's going to be and how we're bad for the planet and how this cataclysm is coming sometime after 2030 and our population's got to be reduced. So what they're doing is corralling us, locking us down, taking away our resources, turning us against each other, while they build what they believe, an accelerated path of evolution to merge with cybernetic systems and genetic engineering systems to become, quote, gods. You've all heard Harari make similar statements to that where he actually says, we are going to be gods. Ray Kurzweil, the head futurist at Google, says, I don't believe in God yet, but I'm going to become a god. But for them to become a god, they must play god and artificially create a cascade of cataclysms or Armageddon's that lead to this planetary crisis out of which they build their breakaway civilization or their Noah's arcs, not ark, arcs to separate themselves from humanity. They believe it is their evolutionary job to call us and to carry this out. And that if we're too stupid when they publicly admit their plans to speak out against them and to resist them and to build a, a, a different cosmology for a different future, if we don't lay out other ideas and other destinies for people to get behind, we then cede the entire brain trust in future to these monsters. This could not be a more important issue. This is the central issue of the elite capture. Yes, the mega corporations of the world are allied with communist China. Yes, they control the media. Yes, they control most academia and the banks. And yes, they are selling us that we deserve to die and that this is just part of a foregone conclusion, a self-fulfilling prophecy that for them to transcend, we must die. They are self-appointed doing what Hitler did, but on a much wider, more complex scale. And that's why they're dividing us. That's why they're poisoning us. That's why they're dumbing us down. That's why they're trying to destroy all the educational systems, turn us into a bunch of mindless idiots so that we don't contend for them for the future. This is a war for the future, a war for the world, a war for the species. We are at the crossroads. Thank you for joining us on this live Wednesday broadcast. We're going to go to break. I'm going to come back and lay all of this critical information out. Nothing is more important than this information. Stay with us. It's Wednesday, October 26, 2022. I'm your host, Alex Jones. And I'm about to lay out the most important information on this planet. Without a doubt, this is the most central, critical information facing not just our species, but all life on this planet. The globalists are transhumanist technocrats who believe they are forcing an accelerated evolution of humanity into a new ubermension or super species that is a hybridized homo sapien sapien merged with new biotech and cybernetic forms of life. And they believe they are the guardians of this planet and to step into that position, they need to play God and need to carry out the forced depopulation of at least 90% of Earth. Now, I've been talking about this for 28 years on air because I've been reading their own reports, their own books, their own white papers, and watching their speeches on C-SPAN. And now we've gone from this being a very esoteric thing decades ago to being out in the open because they're going from testing phase or beta phase into operational phase. And we played a lot of clips here on air of the high priest of the World Economic Forum, a medieval studies professor, Yuval Noah Harari, who did not come up with any of these ideas himself. They're actually the ideas of Julian Huxley and others that first founded the transhumanist movement after World War II, changing the name from the World Eugenics Society to the World Transhumanist Society to forcibly take control of what they believe is human evolution and again, merge humans with advanced biotech and machines. But before that process can be carried out, they have to step into the evolutionary position uh, of God, in their words, and direct the direction uh, of human development. There's a new clip of Noah Yuval Harari that we're about to play in a moment, where he explains the big secret of secrets. The general public's not going to make it. The general public's going to be destroyed in a cataclysm, in a flood-like event, 
that they're going to orchestrate and implement, and that the elites will then steal all the technological development and ideas of humanity to build their escape ship off of the earth. Now, national media in the last 20 years has made a lot of fun of me when I explained that interdimensional off-world influence, the Bible tells us is Satan, is manipulating humans here on the planet to build a escape system to get off the planet in which this interdimensional entity is trapped in a vortex. And that we are actually more advanced than this fallen species that's more robotic the way it's described in the Bible. And that it is uh, again, seeking to manipulate us into building uh, this this new system that it can then escape with. Now, again, this sounds completely fantastical and wild, but it, you'll notice now in a moment that Yuval Harari says exactly that, that the elites are going to break away from humanity, become a new species, and escape in a new Noah's Ark from humanity. The reason I've been laying this out for years is studying their documents the reports this is actually what they believe that's why we've seen elon musk begin to break with these globalists and openly say beware those that worship ai gods and those that believe they're going to become ai gods because they've made the decision that you don't deserve to go into the future and they've made the decision that they're going to direct every facet of not just human life but all life on this planet here is the short 56 second clip of harari laying out their plan you have a small elite that, um, that pushes things in its own interests, even if it doesn't benefit the vast majority of the population. This has happened so many times previously in history, and it's probably going to happen again. Um, the, one of the biggest dangers to the planet today is this technological utopia, because probably for the elite, it will work. If bad comes to worse, then when the flood comes, the scientists will build a Noah's Ark for the elite, leaving the rest to drown, the rest of the people and then the rest of the, of the ecosystem. But they are likely to be able to construct this technological Noah's Ark, which is probably what much of the elite is, is counting on. There are countless other clips we've played of Harari that I would remind you of. Just a few months ago, he said he doesn't believe in God, but that we're going to become gods, similar to what Ray Kurzweil and Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates and others have said, this is their transhumanist. So what we see for sure, we see what their unsustainable goal is about. All over the world, where you see the floods breaking out upon you, but where you see any two days or in a day, three years rainfall, or how much months rainfall in a day. When, when all these things are happening upon the face of the earth, is the elite kind of their plan. But what is their plan? Their plan is to do what? End the history of man. End the history of humanity. End the history of organic life and bring about a, a new age of inorganic life. This is the work that they are doing in their aim to become gods. So don't be fooled by a UN sustainable goal for 2030. No, because by, and as Ben and I say, they already ex accelerate their aim and they decide to bring it up closer. But what is, in, what, what is involved in them, in their sustainable goal, is mass depopulation. It has no sustainable goal for humanity in that. But what all of this come about from, because I wanted to stay in mind, the fight against Christ, the fight against his influence in society, the fight against the Holy Spirit and the social Christian. This is why all this evil come about. And what we have to get in our mind, there is no man seeking to play God. There is no man fighting against the work of the Holy Spirit for the salvation of humanity could bring about any sustainable goal for humanity. There is no man subject their mind to the influence of evil angels who is bent on the destruction of humanity 
could bring about any sustainable goal for humanity. Any sustainable goal for humanity could only be found in Christ's church to the systematic theology. This is the systematic order of the plan of salvation in the systematic theology, the sin-free existence that will make you be identified as a world without end. Here, how it's going to make you be identified as the Christian who is the church of God, world without end, that is sustainable. That is sustainability. That is you being what? Kept up in, or forever. Or you be, or you securing salvation to live forever. That is the reality, right? So you can take down body video now, Sister Ashley, right? So we so we only have four more quotations from Sister White and then two scriptures and we end, right? So Sister Ashley can put the quotation from Sister White. And the first one. The first quotation I can put up first is where she's talking about the withdrawing power from the Holy Spirit. And the withdrawing, um, the restraining spirit of God being taken from the earth. And then we will go to the next tree, right? But I don't want to try it any longer. You want to bring that? Right? right, the last, the last quotation, right? The last quotation. Right. It is said here, right? As a people, as a what? Now, this quotation is said to us, for the church of God. This quotation is said to us, the, the church of God. And how are we to be in a time like this? What are we to be found doing? How are we to be found preparing? What are the works we must be found doing towards the world? This quotation is for us. As a people, we must prepare the way of the Lord. So when we see the restraining power of the Holy Spirit being what? With John, we see the, um, Satan working in the elements, in accident, in, in storm, in pestilence, in the calamity. When we see he's working through evil men in high places, when we see this is happening upon the face of the earth, what we must be found doing as a people, as a people, we must prepare the way of the Lord. Under the overruling guidance of the Holy Spirit, how are we to be found preparing the way of the Lord? Under the what? Overruling guidance of the Holy Spirit. You know what that means? We must be found preparing the way of the God settle into the position of the truth, not to be moved. Amen? It continues. The gospel is to be proclaimed in its purity. The stream of living water is to deepen and widen in its course. In fields nigh and afar off, men will be called from the plow and from the more common commercial business vocations and will be educated in connection with men of experience. Amen, Virgin? This is what we must be found doing at a time like this. We must be found working under the overruling power of the Holy Spirit. We must be found working in every field. We must be found seeking out ways to widen the spread of the gospel what we must be found doing at a time like this. We must be found calling men out of different fields and calling them to the gospel. This is what we must be found doing at a time like this. It says, as they learn to labor effectively, they will proclaim the truth with power through much wonderful workings of divine providence Mountains of difficulty will be removed. Amen. Amen. This is how we must be found at a time like this, as the people of God, as working and laboring effectively to bring the gospel to people. In proclaiming the truth with power, that is proclaiming the truth with the power of the spirit. 
that is proclaiming the word or the word of his strength or the word of his power. We must be found working with that at a time like this. We must be found having the Holy Spirit working with us and working, how else is I put it? Great work to what? Divine providence. That is being prepared for miracle working power from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Brother Michael, I'm remembering. There's and another quotation by Mrs. Sorry? Uh, um, somebody call me by Mrs. So I'm going to go out and come back and get it in here, right? Okay. Okay, so what I was hearing, Bridget, let me just pull back up this chat here, Brother Michael was reading the last paragraph, right? Where it says, as a people, we must prepare the way of the Lord. Just now, nice. Prepare the way of the Lord and under the overruling guidance of the Holy Spirit. The gospel is to be proclaimed in its purity. The stream of living water is to deepen and widen its, in its course. In fields near and afar off, men will be called from the plow and from the more common commercial business vocations and will be educated in connection with men of experience. As they learn to labor effectively, they will proclaim the truth with power through most wonderful workings of divine providence, mountains of difficulties will be removed. So, you know, this reminds me. So what we get from this, first of all, is that you know, we must, time is late and in preparing the way of the Lord, we must be proclaiming the gospel, exactly. right? We must be proclaiming the gospel. Amen. We must be preaching the gospel and people will join the truth and labor as well in proclaiming the truth with power. And I'm reminded of the of a quotation from Mrs. White where she showed that it is in the field that the latter rain will fall, just like the grass is in the field and the grass will get the rain. Is likewise in the field while you're doing the work, that is when the latter rain will fall on you. So that's why, you know, brother, they're always encouraging us to preach the truth. You Amen. know, go and do a lie, do something, preach the people, just preach the truth. It, because we must be the only way the latter rain would fall on us for us to, you know, preach the truth with power and do miracles is when we out on the field working. And out on the field could be physically out on the field or out on the field through social media and whatever means. But the point is, you must be working, you must be involved in the preaching of the gospel for the latter rain to fall in it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I remember by God's grace. Amen, amen, sister. Mm. Um, yes, and this here is the next chart, right? <clears throat> now, this chart has some very nice quotations, Virgin. And the reason why, you know, thanks, thanks to Sita Sitashi, you know, <clears throat> and we put together this chart here because it has some nice things, but also some warning to us. And the warnings are important, right? It says here, Probationary time will not continue much longer. Now God is withdrawing, watch it. Now God is withdrawing his restraining hand from the earth. So this is how I say he's withdrawing his restraining spirit. You shouldn't spirit of God has been what? Withdrawn. In the next quotation, she say he's what? Withdrawing his blessing. In this quotation, she say, Here's what? Restraining hand. Are you seeing that, Virgin? So he is withdrawing his restraining hand from the earth. And as God withdraw his what? Restraining hand from the earth, what will happen? Probationary time will not continue. Probationary time will not continue much longer as God withdraw his restraining hand from the earth. So when we see all these things happening, is because the close of probation is nigh. Probationary time is soon to close. Long had he been speaking to men and women through the agency of the Holy Spirit, but they have not heeded the call. 
Now he is speaking to his people and to the world by his judgment. So the thing that he's allowing to happen, and Brother Matthew, we don't appreciate what Brother Nairn is doing on a Friday. But the things that is happening, every time Brother Nairn come and he give us this, the, these videos, showing us what is happening, showing us how evil angels work here, showing us all the catastrophes and things. These things are happening upon the face of the earth, and God is allowing it to happen, to speak to his people, and to speak to the world. He's allowing it to happen to speak to the, his people and to speak to the world. Are you all seeing that, Virgin? The time of this judgment is a time of mercy. The time of these judgments is a time of mercy. So look, right now, all these calamities and storms and destruction happening, but yet still salvation is available. Yet still mercy is available. Amen, Virgin? So the time of this judgment is a time of mercy for those who have not yet had an opportunity to learn what is the truth. You all see that? Tenderly, will the Lord look upon them? His heart of mercy is touched. His hand is still stretched out to save. Large numbers will be admitted to the fall of safety who in these last days will hear the truth for the first time. Amen, Virgin? But how we expect them to hear the truth if we don't preach? How we expect them to hear the truth if we don't find means and ways to get the truth to them? Because God is allowing this judgment to happen with mercy, still with salvation, still available to bring people to a knowledge of the truth. But for them to come to a knowledge of the truth, we must be ready. We must be prepared to be the ministers to give them it. Continuing, the Lord call upon those who believe in him to, work, to be workers together with him. Watch this part, Virgin, watch this part. Why life shall last, because there's a time when life will end. Isn't that so? There's a time when life will do what? End. Why life shall last, they are not to feel that their work is done. Are you all understanding that, Virgin? Shall we allow the signs of the end to be fulfilled without telling people of what is coming upon the earth? Shall we allow them to go down in darkness without having urge upon them the need of a preparation to meet their Lord? Unless we ourselves do our duty to those around us, watch this part, Virgin. The day of God will come upon us as a thief. Are you seeing that, Virgin? When we are watching all these calamities happening, when we are watching all this judgment of mercy taking place, we have to be found preaching the gospel to prepare people. But, Sister White, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, tell us. If we fail to work and to fulfill our duty to those around us, we ourselves will be caught by the day of the Lord coming as a thief. You know what you mean? We ourselves will not be prepared. We ourselves will be lose out. The day of the Lord will come upon us ourselves as a thief if we fail to do the duties that we ought to do to those that are wrong us, who will perish. Confusion fills the world. Is not that happening in our time now? Confusion fills the world. And a great terror is soon to come upon human beings. The end is very near. We could say the end is now. We who know the truth shall be preparing shall be, we who know the truth should be preparing for what is soon to break up on the world as an overwhelming surprise. Amen, Virgin? Amen? 
So look what Sister White want us to tell us. She want us to tell us we in this time, when we work in all these calamities, must be workers together with God. We must be declaring the message while life lasts. We must not think our work is done. We must see the signs being fulfilled and warn people that they're going to attack Christless grave. And if we fail to do, our, to do our duties, the warning to us, the day of the Lord is going to come upon you and I as a thief if we fail. We have to, in a time like this, be from preparing people to meet the Lord. Amen? We ourselves must be prepared for that overwhelming one. Surprise. It is true to come and I glad how she put it. She said, overwhelming surprise. Continue. As a people, we must prepare the world. We, we must, as a people, we must prepare the way of the Lord. Under the overruling guidance of the Holy Spirit will rise. So we know but read that already, but I read it again. Under the overwhelming guidance of the Holy Spirit, the gospel is to be proclaimed in its purity. The stream of living water is to be deepened and widened in its force. Deeper, it must go deeper and widen, it must spread abroad in its course. In fields nigh and afar off, men will be called from the plow. When we are found doing our work and from the more common commercial business location, when we are found doing our work and will be educated in connection with men of experience, when we are found doing our work, as they learn to labor effectively, they will proclaim the truth with power. Through most wonderful working of divine providence, mountains of difficulties will be removed. Amen, does it? So you could take down the quotation. Right, Sister Ashley? So look, look, you see something very nice, isn't that so? We must be found doing our work. But whilst we labor, we must be found being what? Prepared. We must be found taking every opportunity to deal with ourselves. Cut out the nonsense. And all the havoc that is taking place in, in your mind, which you would as allow to happen to you, which you would as give your mind over to. Because tem no temptation has come upon any man and just take him over just so. You would as choose it. When, you're, when you allow your mind to reap, run havoc in cause outlined by evil angels for you to do and separate your mind from the gospel of Jesus Christ, and do not walk upright according to the faith of him. You is responsible for that. You, you and I have nobody to blame but ourselves. The reality is we have to prepare for the day of the Lord. We have to make our colonial election sure. We have to stop these nonsense, this foolishness. Cut it out and become dedicated to him that has called us unto life. The reality is if we do not do what we're supposed to do, we will be lost. If when the day comes, you and I are not found reflecting Christ's image, bearing his character, thinking upon the wonderful truth of his divine nature, but allowing all kind of things to take the mind, all kind of reasoning to take the mind, all kind of flippant reason of speculation and assumptions and all kind of nonsense. If we allow that to happen, we are responsible to be lost. We are responsible for our own salvation being destroyed. We are the ones responsible. And you and I don't want to spend all those years and at the end of that be lost. All these years in the faith and for what happened to you, for the day to come upon you and ours, you know what she means when she said the day will come upon you as a thief? That time to the quotation, you'll be one of them running with the virgin and the plates fall on you. That's what that means, you know. That means you run in and plates falling on you.
We have limited time. This is the time all our preparation is supposed to be done because Satan is gathering one unprepared souls, but we must be from working with God to warn them, to make sure that they do not go to our crisis grave. Isn't that so? Every laborer is needed. Everybody is called to work and we must work. It's not a statement that the Ella make a day I'm talking. He said, he show, I need you. He make that statement, he said, I need you. What that means? Each laborer is needed. He can't do it alone. Every last one of us is needed. And we should make sure that we make our call and selection sure. The mantle is given in our hand. What are we going to do with it? Are we going to fall asleep or are we going to get up and shake the world like the 12 did? Like the 12 apostles did? Are we going to shake this world like the 12 apostles did? Or are we going to keep on being people People of hot air, or the words come out of the mouth sweet, but the harvest is bitter, or are we going to be strong in the Lord, in his mind, and do the work? We have to make our calling and selection sure. Amen, brethren. So I want to close on the issue of justification with just two scriptures. Okay? I will close on the issue of justification with just two scriptures. Okay? Because the issue of making it in these last days is the issue of justification. Being changed from sin to righteousness. Being made a new man. That is the real issue here. Amen? Having a man occupied with the treasures of heaven. Okay? Right. So Romans chapter 8 verse Six to verse eleven. Okay. Seven. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot do what? Please God. So the scripture tells us to be carnally minded. But the proper translation is the thoughts of the flesh is death. And what are these thoughts of this flesh? Thoughts that are originate with the man from his vacuous state. That is thoughts that come from your vacuous state. Your state that is empty of God. So thoughts originating with the flesh is thoughts that come from your vacuous state. Your state of being empty. So they are taught of what? Idol values. Are you all understanding that? They are taught of what? Idol values. So look, the Bible tells you your own human thoughts empty of God is dead. Your own human thoughts having idol values is dead. But what is life? Your mind Having the what? Spirit led reasoning is life and peace. You having the thoughts of the spirit is life and peace. Because the Bible tells you, your human mind, vacuous of God, is transgression of the law. Your human thoughts with idol in it is transgression of the law. It is not subject to the law and it cannot be. So as long as you have those thoughts, you cannot please God. That's what the Bible is telling you and I. So what do we need to be free from? See, to please God, our own thoughts. Our thoughts vacuous of God. Our carnal thoughts. That's what we need to be free from. Idol values in the mind. That's what we need to be free from. But how? How are we free from that? Only through justification 
where we receive the thoughts of the spirit. So let's look at Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 18, and then come back to Romans chapter 9. Romans 8, 9. Romans 5, 1 and 18, and come back to Romans 8, 9. And Bridget, I would like to tell you, I just hate him. Having thoughts that is not subject to God. But let's look at Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and verse 18. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord, what? Jesus Christ. You see that? So when we are justified by faith, then we get peace. But the Bible says to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So it is what is needed is justification by what? The faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to have the what? The spirit and mind or the thoughts of the spirit. But what type of justification? Justification of your mind, an inner subjective change oriented justification, a justification that makes you no longer have the carnal mind. A justification that makes you not have the thoughts of the spirit. That causes you to have spirit-led reasoning. Verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto the justification of life. So when we receive the justification by faith, and therefore we receive the justification by life, we have the righteousness of one. So the righteousness of one that come upon all men, when they say come upon you, it means it come what? Into you. So this righteousness of one that come upon you, which is into you, cause you to receive the what? Justification of life. And what is that life? the justification of the experience of God's love. You see that? So justification by faith causes us to have the righteousness of the one in us that causes us to have the experience of love. But when we have righteousness by faith in us, we have what? The spiritual mind, life and peace. But when we have it in us now, we no longer carnal. Because here what Romans chapter 8 verse 9 to verse 11 tell us now. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 to verse 11. Here what it tell us now. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, is what? None of this. You see that? So when we receive the justification by faith, that's receiving the justification of life. And we no longer in the flesh having the carnal mind in us, but we are now in the spirit having the spirit of mind in us. We have the spirit of what? God and Christ in us. You see that? And when you have the spirit of God and Christ in us, we are his. Because when you don't have it, you're not his. So to be his is to have the spirit in you. Amen? Now come on first 10. And if Christ be in you, wait now. Paul, Paul look like if he was there and he was just hearing Christ. Christ say, I will send you comforter. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. Paul, if you have the spirit of God and Christ, you have it in you justified, you are his own. If you don't have it, you're not his. And then if Paul, if Christ be in you. So when you have the spirit in you, who you have in you? The character of Christ in you. That's why the only how anybody can know the Holy Spirit is by knowing the what? The faith of Jesus Christ. When you know the faith of Christ, when you and I know the doctrines of Christ, that is when we know the Spirit. That's why you could say, and I could say, the Spirit don't talk so. The Spirit don't work so. The Spirit don't do so. Because we know the what? The doctrines of Jesus Christ. That's how we know the spirit. But when the spirit is in you and he's in your mind, you have the spiritual mind. It continues. 
And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that does what? Dwell in you. Amen, brethren? So when the spirit dwell in you, you and I have what? Life in our mortal bodies. You know what that means? You're no longer what? Dead in sin and trespasses. So you know what that means? It means from the moment of justification, we are sin free. We are free from sin because we have the spirit in us in place of the what? The thoughts of the flesh that is thought originated from your vacuous state, your empty state, this idle values. So now that the spirit is in you, you are, your human reason is now spirit led. So your human mind is now subject to the divine mind. And the spirit is in your mind, structuring your thoughts according to the spirit. So all you have is thoughts of light, thoughts of truth, thoughts of righteousness, thoughts of God. All things in you is now of God. And there is nobody on that life to tell me when a man has spirit, let reason is a sinner. Nobody on that life could tell me when a man has spirit, let reason he still have the carnal man. Because spirit led reason means you no longer have your own, your own thoughts back yourself, God. Your human reason is now subject to God that you think after the spirit. And if you're thinking after the spirit, you will have what? No occasion to the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof. Isn't that what the Bible tells us? Think about these things, brethren. We have the gospel of Jesus in the systematic theology. We have the gospel of Jesus in the blue book. We have the gospel of Jesus in the yellow book. We have the gospel of Jesus in the white book. Think upon these things. Let these things start to flood your mind. Can I mind thought of the flesh? That is thought for my vacuous state. Thoughts with me empty of God. You see that? My human reason governed by speculation, by errors, by idols. In that state, I know I'm not pleasing God. So what I need? A spirit-led reason from justification. When that happened to me, am I in the flesh? No. So if I reckon myself to be dead into sin, that, reckon, that reckoning could only come from the estimation of the spirit who transforms my mind. So if I esteem myself dead, to, dead unto sin, I'm esteeming myself after the work of the spirit in the heart. What are the causes in me? The next step. What is the next step? Go and say no more. Amen? And these are the truths that we need to keep in our minds. We have to keep it. We have to go it over, over and over every day. Take up your systematic theology to the people online who don't know. We have the systematic theology on Amazon. We have the blue book on righteousness, justification, righteousness, and salvation. We have the um, yellow book that calls what studies on prophecy. And we have the um, or, prophetic studies. Yes, prophetic studies. And we have the white book that is, the white book is um, what? Studies on the Adventist Evangelical Gospel. That is the white book. We have all those books on Amazon. And we beg everybody who hear us, get the book. Go and study the book. And we ask our own brethren, please, we beg in your own brethren, study, study the book. Take up the book and study it. Spend time and stop having excuses. Stop lying to yourself. Get up and go and study the book and meditate and abide in it. And let us do the work. So, so that there is the end of the study Bible. Right? End the study by the grace of God. I hope this study was a blessing to everybody. I hope this study was a blessing to everyone. I hope that everyone benefit from the truth that was shared. I hope that everyone gets an understanding, some portion that will be kept by the grace of God. And that 
Once you hear us and you get convicted, contact any one of these brethren on Facebook. Studies will be given to you. One hour two, Tuesday at the Gospel. We have a page where all the studies is. Go there. Contact and make it um add this, add the page. Follow us. All right. We do beg. Okay. So Satashi, you want to throw your face for us? Okay, so let us pray, right? Loving Father, which art in heaven, thou who art creator, who art the savior, and you created all things, and by you all things consist. You sustain us on the earth with sin freeness and it is the principles of Christ in society which is there to influence men so that they can experience salvation, experience conversion. It is those principles that sustain the earth. You who are the creator, you are responsible for the rain upon the just and the unjust. And wicked men mm -hmm. are seeking to artificially change the climate, to destroy the earth. So while you seek to preserve the earth so that men could experience, have a chance to experience salvation, wicked men, Satan using evil, evil angels and wicked men is seeking to destroy the earth and Ghana, the harvest of unprepared souls. Help us, oh God, when we see these things, help us to see the workings of Satan and his evil angels in seeking to cause men to reject the Holy Spirit on a global scale. Help us to see the horror of it and help us, oh God, to appreciate mm -hmm the privilege that we have to have your Holy Spirit with us by being in us through justification by faith. Help us to allow the Spirit to work in us for sin freeness, giving us a spirit-led reasoning. Help us to appreciate that experience, which we call liberty of conscience, so that as we face the attacks upon the laws that protect liberty of conscience happening from the King of the South and the King of the North, we can rivet ourselves more in the experience of conversion. We can be sealed in the experience of conversion that no one and nothing they can do can take that experience from us. Because we have a lot, we have a lot of work, of work to do, and we have a lot of evils to face. And we need all time sinfulness. We need to be concretized in the experience of conversion to be able to do it, do the work, and to face the evils. Help us, O oh God. Please continue to encourage us, to strengthen us, to prepare us. As we are to face the end, which is here. These are the mercies we ask of you in your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 So may the grace of God be to you all, Virgin. And love of God be with everyone. Bye.